So just to start off this discussion, let's first understand that Lambda is regionally scoped. And if your users are in another different regions or other different regions, then to provide users with a better user experience, you should take help from another service that can help you execute your code closer to your users. And that service is AWS CloudFront. And that's where we place our AWS Lambda at Edge. And remember one thing, AWS Lambda at Edge is a feature of AWS CloudFront or Amazon CloudFront. So remember this very carefully that it's a feature of Amazon CloudFront and not a feature of AWS Lambda, uh, which basically lets us to run our code closer to our users of our applications, uh, which actually improves performance and reduces the latency that we actually want to reduce. So to summarize it, uh, AWS Lambda at Edge is a provisional feature by Amazon CloudFront that helps us to run or execute our code closer to our customers that can help us reduce latency and increase performance. But don't think that you won't get the same features as AWS Lambda. For sure you will. Yes, with AWS Lambda as well, you don't have to provision or manage infrastructure in multiple locations around the world. And that's a very good thing. And just like uh, you have trigger points uh, with AWS Lambda, when it comes to AWS Lambda at Edge, it runs your code in response to events that are generated by the Amazon CloudFront. So that is our content delivery network or the CDN. Okay, so remember this very carefully. So it runs your code in response to events that are generated by the Amazon CloudFront. Okay, so now let's discuss some of the features of AWS Lambda at Edge. And some of them might be similar to what we have already discussed for AWS Lambda. So don't worry about that. So the first one is build more responsive applications. So what AWS tells us is that with AWS Lambda at Edge, you can run your code globally at AWS at AWS locations close to your customers and users. So you can deliver full featured customized content with high performance and low latency. So for example, your users are present in Germany. So you can provide the users in Germany the content in their own language or you can provide them the content that is more relevant to their region. And the second one is no servers to manage. So with AWS Lambda at Edge as well, we can automatically scale our application code or the function code we have and we can run our code at AWS locations around the world. And the best part is that you can do this without having to provision, scale, or manage origin servers at those regions and locations. And obviously you don't need to set up any load balancing or any DNS. The third one is important and it is relevant to AWS CloudFront for Lambda at Edge. So that is uh, customize your content delivery. So if you remember Amazon CloudFront, we used to set up our uh, CDNs in regions and we used to cache the resources of the origin server which used to help the users located thousands of miles away to access these resources with low latency and improvised performance and that data that we get as a part of the request or from CloudFront can be customized using AWS Lambda at Edge. So that is what we discussed a few moments before as you can deliver full featured customized content with high performance and low latency. Okay, so the incoming request that you have can be customized with AWS Lambda at Edge. So we have already seen how Lambda works. Now let's see how Lambda at Edge works. So in simple words, the first step is for you to write the code that you have and upload it to AWS Lambda as a part of your Lambda function. Then we create a trigger point at AWS CloudFront to execute our Lambda code. And then we have our Lambda at Edge run our code closer to our customers and users and you pay for the compute charges. Okay, so it's pretty simple, straightforward. And here, if you see the image below, if you have used CloudFront at the end of the form, while you're creating a CDN distribution, AWS actually provides us an option to choose the Lambda ARN to which you're going to provide the, or for which you're going to provision for AWS Lambda at Edge. And there are multiple events with which you can associate your Lambda code like your viewer request or viewer response or origin request or origin response. And that is what we will be discussing now. So when you create a CloudFront distribution, if you go to the form and uh, if you go down below at the end, you will have Lambda function associations There you can choose one of the CloudFront events and you can provide the Lambda function ARM and that will actually help CloudFront to trigger your Lambda at Edge code. Okay. So here we will be discussing about how and what are the CloudFront events that can trigger a Lambda function. So recall the image I showed you in the previous slide about the events and think of them as the trigger points. If I ask you how does a trigger point gets invoked, 
you might tell me that if I click a link, if that is associated with a REST API or a HTTP API, then it can help us trigger an API gateway event. Yes, it's obviously right. And if you ask me about what about SNS events then? Yes, with SNS, it will be based on if there are messages that can act as a trigger point. So the first one that you see here, the example that I gave, that was indirectly manual event where you're clicking on a link to trigger the event. And the second one or the other one is an automated event, isn't it? So there are two types of events that we can have. When we talk about CloudFront, here we have to think of events as incoming requests or outgoing responses or vice versa. And having said that, remember very carefully that there are four events here. So the first one is viewer request, the second one is viewer response, the third one is origin request, and the fourth one is origin response. So viewer here is the user itself, and the origin is the one who is serving the request, isn't it? And here as well, if you see, there are two incoming events and uh, there are two outgoing events in the example that I've shown below. And if you see here, the CloudFront actually sits in between you and your origin server. And now let's see how these four trigger points work and how we can invoke our Lambda at Edge using these four trigger points. Okay, so the first one is viewer request and that is the incoming request to the CloudFront and it triggers Lambda after CloudFront receives a request from the user. Okay, and before executing the code, it actually checks to see whether the requested object is in the CloudFront cache or not. So it's simple, the user actually sends the request and the CloudFront checks if it is already there before sending it to the origin. So the second one that you see here is origin request. That is the outgoing request from the CloudFront and it triggers the Lambda code before CloudFront forwards the request to the origin. Okay, so if you see here, it's just before the origin and it has to pass through the CloudFront. Okay, so it triggers the Lambda code before CloudFront forwards the request to the origin. So that is why it is called as origins request. And the third one is the origins response. So that is an incoming response from the origin and it triggers the Lambda code after CloudFront receives the response from the origin. So the response has been received by the origin to the CloudFront. And if this is a response from the origin, the function gets executed even if there are any errors that are returned from the origin. And there are two conditions when it doesn't execute the Lambda code. So the first condition is when the requested file is in the CloudFront cache and is not expired. So that is the first condition. And the second condition that you have to remember is when the response is generated from a function that was triggered by an origin request event. Okay. At last, the fourth one is the viewer response. So that is an outgoing response. So here it triggers the Lambda code before CloudFront actually forwards the response to the viewer. So the important part here is that the function executes regardless of whether the file is already there in the CloudFront cache because it is an outgoing response to the viewer. And moreover, it has been explicitly triggered as a part of the event set by the developer itself. And the function doesn't get executed in these following cases that you have. So the first one is when the origin returns an HTTP status code of 400 or higher and when a custom error page is returned or when the response is generated from a function that was triggered by a viewer request event or when CloudFront automatically redirects an HTTP request to HTTPS. So it's basically when the value of the viewer protocol policy is redirected from HTTP to HTTPS. And you might ask me, can I use the same function with multiple distributions or multiple CloudFront distributions? And you might ask me if I can use the same function as multiple CloudFront distributions and the answer will be yes, you can use them. And you might ask me if CloudFront actually waits before making a trigger when an event is already in progress. And the answer will be yes, it does wait for an event to complete post which it can make another trigger. And you might ask like, can I have all these events for a single function? And the answer to this is also yes, you can have all these functions, sorry, you can have all these associations to a single function. So try to understand this very carefully because it will be very important when you will be designing applications for your users who are going to use it across the globe. Okay, so I hope this was clear. Let's move on. So now let's check some of the use cases. So first use case is to simplify and reduce origin infrastructure. So we can use it for website security and privacy where we can use it as a combination of uh, AWS S3, CloudFront and AWS Lambda at Edge. And we can create dynamic web applications at the edge by using AWS S3 
Plus, AWS CloudFront, along with AWS Lambda at Edge and DynamoDB. With this four combination, we can create a very good dynamic website. And we can use it for search engine optimizations for SEOs. And we can also use it to intelligently route across origins and data centers. And we can use it for bot migrations at the edge. And the second use case that we have is for improved user experience. So we can get real-time image transformation and we can perform A to B or A or B testing. And we can also perform user authentication and authorization and also for user prioritization and for user tracking and analytics. So now let's check out some application design with AWS Lambda at Edge. So let's discuss the first design for AWS Lambda at Edge. And if you get time, you can also try this. So the requirement for this application is to provide dynamic content to the users across several regions and thus reducing the latency and improving the overall user experience. So first off, for the user interface, we have a static HTML code that we have placed it in the S3 bucket. And for the CDN or the content delivery, we have hosted the CDN in the US region, which is configured with AWS Lambda at Edge, which has our code that pulls the data from the DynamoDB, which helps us to format our website page with the desired dynamic content that we want to serve the users of North America. So with CloudFront, the biggest advantage is that the content gets cached at the edge locations and the next time the user actually asks for the content if it is already present in the edge cache it doesn't have to query the same from the origin okay so it makes it very fairly very easy and very quick for the users to access it once it has already been queried so this is a simple design for an application to be hosted along with cloudfront and lambda at edge let's move on to the next one with Lambda at Edge, we have another use case that can be discussed that is the intelligent routing across origins and data centers. I know you might feel that uh, S3 is a global service and why are we using S3 as an example? That's right. But having said that, if you have ever created an S3 bucket, you will know that even though the S3 service is global, you have to assign a region while creating the bucket. So don't get confused with this. Okay. The service itself might be global, but the presence of data should be within the region itself. Okay, I hope all of you are aware of GDPR guidelines and that's totally a different topic. And if you want, you can just read about the GDPR guidelines. Okay, so let's move on. So what we have here are two buckets of our static code. One is hosted at S3 in Europe and the other one is at S3 in North America. When the user is using the website, it needs to have faster access and this can also be done by using our Lambda at Edge to compute the route to the local region and its origin which is closest to the user. And that is the main purpose of using Lambda at Edge here. Okay. And this is the feature by which we can intelligently route across origins and data centers. So here when the user visits the website pytholic.com, the application here makes an HTTP request to the CloudFront Edge location and it triggers the call to the AWS Lambda at Edge which actually computes the location or route based on the user's location and then helps the views to be redirected to the nearest origin. But you might ask me like, can't we do this with CloudFront alone? Why should we use Lambda at Edge? Yes, you are right. We can also do the same by editing the CloudFront configuration to use a different origin when you want to move your origin from one region to another. But the main disadvantage here will be CDN or CloudFront, it will take a lot of time for the CDN to propagate across the globe. So it will be a failure if there are frequent changes. So that is the reason why we are using Lambda at Edge. So here Lambda function resolves a DNS record containing the origin that should be used. Thus, it is quick to switch between origins and you don't need to edit any CloudFront distribution configurations here. So that is a very big yes from the AWS side and from my side as well. And the best part is that the same Lambda function can be used by multiple cloud distributions as well or CloudFront distributions as well. So that's an added advantage here. 